Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at Noon starts now. A man charged with killing a Detroit mother in her home while her kids were in the house is back in court today. More on that coming up, but first, breaking news from Taylor, where police say a woman shot and killed her colleague. The investigation into that crime tops our news at noon. Thank you for joining us. I'm Evrod Kasumi. Shortly after 7 a.m., police were called to the Burlington Coat Factory store at Eureka and Rocho Road, and that's where they found a woman shot and took another woman into custody. Local 4 Steve Garagiola is following this breaking news for us. I understand that you just got an update from police. What are they saying? Well, you know, sadly, that's kind of the new mentality in America now, and that when people argue, they reach for a gun. It did happen this morning at about 7 o'clock at the Burlington Coat Factory. We don't have a lot of details. It was some sort of an argument between two female employees. No indication what that argument was about. One of the women had a gun, and she fatally shot the other. The shooter did not try to get away. She waited at the store for police to arrive, and right now police have more questions than answers. There were multiple employees that were at the store when this happened, and we are trying to interview all of them to get the details of the incident now. The employees were coming in for work. The store was not open to the public, and the employees were just checking in for work at the time. So the investigation really has just begun for the police now. They, uh, they do have the woman in custody. The chief tells me detectives have just begun to question her. They have done some residue testing on her hands uh, in terms of evidence. The victim, we don't have an identity because the police still trying to reach out to her family to notify them. Bottom line, two women involved. One is in custody. The other is dead. Reporting live in Taylor, I'm Steve Garagiola, Local 4. We'd love to hear what Burlington Code Factory officials have to say about this. Let's get to even more breaking news now out of New York, where a man has been found guilty, guilty of planning a pressure cooker bomb that exploded last summer in New York's Chelsea neighborhood and injured 30 people. This is 29-year-old Ahmad Khan Rahimi, a man born in Afghanistan and was living in New Jersey, who was convicted on all charges. Prosecutors say that he was inspired by the Islamic State and Al-Qaeda, and he could face life in prison. However, his attorneys do plan to appeal. Here a little closer to home, we're following a developing story from Clawson on a dangerous incident of road rage yesterday. Two cars were nearly face to face in the turning lane of 14 mile east of Crooks. After one car pulled into a tavern parking lot, the other car followed. And there you see the driver of the second car got out with a gun and ran over, uh, ran after the other driver firing a shot. And believe it or not, no one was hurt, but the gunman that you see here pointing the gun did get away. Police are wanting to find him. We're going to have much more on this story coming up on later Local 4 newscast today. The family of a local U.S. Marine recruit who died during training last year is suing the United States government for $100 million. The Marine Corps says the death of 20-year-old Rahil Siddiqui in a three-story fall was a suicide, but his family, Taylor, claims that the death was the result of hazing and abuse. The lawsuit claims negligence on several command levels. The Marine Corps has not yet responded to that lawsuit. Even more breaking news this afternoon from Washington, where the U.S. Supreme Court has agreed to hear a case that could set precedence for the world of cloud computing. A 1986 law allows for warrants to obtain email information that could be used in criminal investigations. But recently, a federal appeals panel denied a warrant for emails stored on a Microsoft server in Ireland, saying the law did not cover overseas data. The Supreme Court today said it will hear a government appeal of that ruling. Also breaking this afternoon, more fallout from the sex harassment scandal that has crushed the career of movie producer Harvey Weinstein. The Weinstein Company, which he used to head, has confirmed it is in negotiations with an investment company and might be ready to sell their company. Harvey Weinstein has been stripped of several honors, and this past weekend, the Academy of Motion Picture, Arts and Sciences revoked his membership. However, British cable TV comedian John Oliver chided the Academy, pointing out other accused sex assailants like director Roman Polanski and comedian Bill Cosby are still members. The man accused of killing a Detroit mom while her kids were home will be in court. A judge will decide if there's enough evidence to send him to trial. Coco McAvoy has more on this horrific crime. 
This was a case that really shocked the community because Latrice Morris Dorsey was shot and killed in her home while her kids were in the house. And now her ex-boyfriend, 37-year-old Earl Maxwell, will be in court today to face charges for her murder. It's been four months since the death of a Detroit mother shot and killed in her own home. This was the scene that day as family and friends learned Latrice Morris Dorsey was murdered. What's really disturbing is that there was a four-year-old child in the house and a 14-year-old, you know, and to, and to find your mom, you know, to hear the gunshots and come out into a room and see your mom laying there bleeding, you know, my heart goes out to them and to the family. Police say Dorsey's ex-boyfriend, Earl Maxwell, shot her multiple times in her home near 8 Mile and the Southfield Freeway. Dorsey's teenager heard arguing followed by gunshots, and neighbors recalled what happened next. He just said, help, that's, you know, my mama's been shot, you know, my mama gonna die. I don't know if he didn't kill my mama, you know, I don't know what's going on. Neighbor Ron Wilson tried reviving Dorsey that day. I gave her CPR and, you know, I noticed the bullet wounds. I noticed she took her last two breaths. Medics responded to the scene and pronounced Dorsey dead. Police say Maxwell turned himself in to the Detroit Police Department a couple of days later in connection to the deadly shooting. Now he will be in court today as more facts are presented in the tragic case. We'll, of course, keep track of this case and let you know what happens. I'm Coco McAvoy, Local 4. All righty, Coco, we, of course, are going to continue to follow that story. Let's turn our attention to the forecast now. Looks like uh, this week is going to be more like classic fall weather. Brandon, we're going to need those sweaters and pumpkin spice lattes. <laughs> pumpkin spiced anything works this time of year, and it is a classic fall week. A lot of it good, uh, but the weekend, not so much, right? We had some really strong Thunderstorm and non-thunderstorm winds that came through. The winds are a lot lighter today, but the cool air has settled in for a couple of days. 53 degrees right now at Metro as our warm spot on the map. 49 just below 10 Celsius in Harrow, Ontario. It's 49 in Lapeer as well. 50 in Pontiac. Comparing our noon temperatures today to noon temperatures Sunday, we are about 20 degrees cooler over the 24 hour period meaning at this time yesterday we had temperatures in the 70s and in the 40s and 50s right now. As we get through the afternoon, struggling temperatures, but refreshing upper 50s, like a, a glass of lemonade. It's as good as I have. I'll talk warmer temps, though, in the seven day coming up. All right, Brandon, thank you. Concerns are being voiced today about proposals before the Trump administration to reverse regulations from the Obama administration over the chicken processing industry. Under rules put in place by the former administration, chicken processing inspection lines were limited to 140 birds per minute. In case you didn't know, the industry and some members of Congress want that limit lifted and they say it'll increase productivity. Critics say an increase will put workers at higher risk of injury, though. The administration is also considering raising inspection rates at pork processing facilities. The United States and South Korea kicked off 10 days of joint naval drills today. This all comes just days after North Korea renewed its threat to fire missiles near the American territory of Guam. The United States military says the drills are aimed at preparing American service members and their families on how to respond in the event of war and other emergencies. U.S. Secretary of State Rex Tillerson says that diplomacy with North Korea will continue until the first bomb drops. All right, so to come here on Local 4 News at noon, a new hope as wildfires continue to rage in Northern California. We'll tell you why firefighters are optimistic as the battle there continues. Plus, intensifying crisis. It's been weeks since Hurricane Maria devastated Puerto Rico, yet the situation there is still dire. We'll tell you why many have resorted to drinking contaminated water. Hi, this. All right, welcome back, everyone. This just in breaking news, Army Sergeant Bo Bergdahl has pleaded guilty, guilty to desertion and misbehavior before the enemy. You might remember it was back in 2009 when Bergdahl disappeared from his base in Afghanistan and was held captive there by the Taliban for five years. Well, the Taliban released Bergdahl in exchange for five detainees at Guantanamo Bay. The misbehavior charge alone carries a maximum penalty of life in prison, and the desertion charge is punishable by up to five years. Well, it has been weeks since Hurricane Maria devastated Puerto Rico, yet the situation 
It's still dire for many people living there. Puerto Rico's governor saying that he hopes that power will be restored to 95% of the island by December 15th. So that's still a long ways away. Sadly, we know that at least 48 people have died and more than 100 are still missing. Many residents are still desperate to, to get the basic necessities to, to live a normal life. They're so desperate that they might even be risking their health by drinking contaminated water, and they're not the only ones. Nearly a month after Hurricane Maria hit, residents around the town of Dorado keep tapping into this water faucet behind a chain link fence with a sign that reads, Danger, do not enter. And despite the warnings from a police officer, they come here to fill containers of water. But few of them know this well sits in an area designated by the Environmental Protection Agency as a Superfund site, where the ground is known to contain dangerously high levels of toxic chemicals. It's located on the northern edge of the island west of San Juan. In the Dorado Superfund site area, there are at least six wells that residents have reportedly tapped into for water. One of the wells is accessed in a shopping center parking lot, and there have been long lines of residents waiting to fill up what they can. The governor of Puerto Rico insists that the water is safe and that the territory's Department of Health has tested it. Obviously, if it's uh, non-drinking water, uh, we're not, we're not going to be serving it. But if it complies with the Clean Water Act, then uh, it, it is going to happen. But it's not clear if the other wells are safe. An Environmental Protection Agency team spent the weekend gathering water samples for further testing. We're not saying that somebody is at immediate danger by drinking this water. It is a, we are considering it a long-term risk. Gary Lipson is the EPA incident commander in Puerto Rico. They're looking for signs of industrial toxins, often linked to serious health problems, including cancer. And EPA documents show that as late as last year, dangerous levels of those industrial toxins were found in the ground. This hurricane survivor brought us to his home, where he lives with his family. The top floor was destroyed by the hurricane. His mother says they've only received two packages of water since the storm, and his mother has been drinking the water from that potentially contaminated well for two weeks, and she now has stomach pains. She says uh, the stomach pain started about two weeks ago, and that she's trying to ignore them. She doesn't know for sure, but she thinks it might have something to do with the water she's been drinking. It's impossible to know for sure if the stomach pains are related, but in these desperate times, with every drop of water, many Puerto Ricans could be flirting with another disaster. That is so scary, very sad, and very eye-opening. Uh, we do want to let you know our Paula Tupman is working on a local connection to the crisis in Puerto Rico. She'll have that coming up on First at Four, but here's a preview. Paula? So it's been more than a month since Hurricane Maria swept through the island of Puerto Rico and decimated it. And a local woman has not been able to reach her parents ever since until this morning. The good news is they are alive. The bad news is they are desperate and suffering. But when this woman said, Mom, how can I help you? The woman said, there's no way to help us. Unless you get on a plane and bring us stuff, there's no way to help us. We're going to try to navigate her through this infrastructure to help her help her parents today at four on first at four. All righty, we'll definitely be tuning in for that. A new day and a new week are bringing new hope to firefighters that are battling the worst wildfires in California state history. The winds have calmed there and the weather forecast calls for late rain a little bit later this week, which of course will then help the firefighters work on containing the blaze there. 40 people have died in these fires. At least 250 are reported missing, and more than 100,000 people had to evacuate their homes. 11,000 firefighters have been called in. They're still battling 15 fires that are burning across a 100-mile area of that state. So we certainly hope that the weather will help them get this under control. So to come here at noon, it's a pretty troubling report. Researchers say that hackers have cracked an important security layer that protects Wi-Fi networks. We'll tell you what you can do to protect yourself. Brandon? It is a classic, beautiful fall week. We're talking about cool temperatures, some warmer temperatures, some bright sunshine and beautiful fall colors. And we'll explain it all, the seven-day forecast. Is it all right that we're already looking into the weekend next? Don't wait.
Welcome back to Local 4 News today. We're going to start out with an interesting uh, storm pin here from Macomb, Michigan. And take a look at this rain gauge. We had a few of these reports over the weekend from Saturday, Sunday rains. That's over four inches. Sports buzz on our storm pins from Macomb, Michigan. Rain gauge from rain last night and this morning. That was sent yesterday. So four plus inches of rain in some spots. Absolutely amazing. Your local four storm pins. That's a free app for you under WDIV in your app store. What a beautiful shot this is. It's tough to complain about the cool conditions when it is just spectacular views out there. 53 degrees, a little northwest wind at six and only getting into the middle and upper 50s through your Monday afternoon. And that means the cool air is here through the overnights. We're back down into the low 40s first thing on Tuesday morning with 30s in many of our suburbs a lot like we hit today. So it'll be a cool start tomorrow with a little change coming your way. We see the clearing of the skies this morning. We even had a couple of drips and drops in parts of Lenaway County up near the Tri Cities area, but a lot of it is fizzling out as it comes into dry air and there's really not a whole lot to this tomorrow. One thing that is going to help us warm up what's called a pressure gradient, high pressure to our south, low pressure to our north and in between we squeeze the two together and the winds are going to whip through there coming out of the southwest tomorrow 10 to 25 miles an hour and not a dangerous wind but a little bit of a nuisance and a conveyor belt of warmer air. It's really about it. Here we go through the afternoon and evening on our computer model. Another wedge of wet weather coming off of Lake Michigan that will fizzle apart as we hit this late afternoon and evening. As we head into your Tuesday afternoon, again, windy at times, but bright sunshine. And we should go from the upper 50s today into the middle 60s tomorrow on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, flirting with 70 degrees. We do have cool morning but a very beautiful sunny week without any wet weather really expected until late Sunday. Alrighty, thank you very much, Brandon. Let's get to this. Help me hang consumer alert now. It's an update for all of us who use Wi-Fi networks. This is pretty much everybody. A research report says that hackers have cracked an important security layer that protects those Wi-Fi networks and they can manipulate a security process to reach devices that are connected. Researchers don't know if the flaw is being exploited right now, and they also point out that the attacker, the hacker, must be within Wi-Fi range of the victim. So at this point, Wi-Fi users are just advised to make sure that the routers and digital devices are all updated. Never can be too safe. All right, still to come here at noon, Halloween came a little early for some small dogs. We'll tell you why a bunch of pugs dressed up in their best costumes when we come back. All right, so finally here at noon, Halloween came a little early for a, a group of small dogs down in Texas, and it was all for a good cause. Pugs from all across North Texas gathered to celebrate the 21st annual Pugaween. <laughs> the annual event features a parade, a very competitive Halloween costume contest. Well, why? Well, this year the celebration was held on National Pug Day. Yes, that is a real thing, and they did this so all the proceeds from the event could be donated to the Dallas Fort Worth Pug Rescue Club. Let that simmer for a little bit. Do you dress Ruby Roo up, your dog? Uh, no, I do not. Well, uh, now you have kind of a reason to, you know? Happy, not a pug, but... Happy National Bosses Day. Yes, that too. Hug your boss.